Hi, welcome back to Britain It's OKC. Okay this is a knitting vlog or podcast where I talk about knitting and sometimes crochet and spinning and maybe some sewing if I've done that. But I haven't done that lately. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I have not recorded in a while and I'm very rusty. <laughs> um, this is my second time trying to record this. Uh, it just did not go well last time. I felt awkward. And um yeah, so I went and I put on my pajamas and made a cup of tea and maybe I'm like more normal now. <laughs> we'll see. Anyway, um yeah, I was off work this last week. I had a staycation, which was much needed and really nice. Um yeah, I basically did some knitting. I went to two knit nights, which was nice. Uh, I went out to lunch with some friends today. Basically just like hung out with my husband all week and watched TV and knit and did not much else. <laughs> I also have like all of these knitting plans like, oh, I can finish this project and I can finish that project and I finished nothing. <laughs> I finished a sleeve. That's what I did. I did a whole sleeve. Um, it's okay though. Like it's not a big deal. I obviously needed a break, kind of, and kind of like no rules, no plan, nothing. Yeah. Um, I went to three knitting stores. One of them was for a knit night though, and I didn't buy anything else because I think I have all of her yarn now. Not really, but I feel like I have because I go there all the time. They know me in there. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I figured I would show you guys um, progress that I've made on some of my projects and then some nice birthday presents and also some birthday presents that I bought for myself because <laughs> that's what you do when you're an adult and you're allowed. Um, I said it was okay, so I did. <laughs> um, I bought myself these purple pajamas. They're very cozy, and I have the bottoms on too. I made myself extremely cozy. Woo! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I really love purple, which you'll see in a minute. <laughs> if it's not apparent yet. Um, I'm not wearing any knitting because I just felt weird. Earlier I was wearing a sweater, and I think I've talked about it before that I I finished the sweater. It was like the first sweater that I made for myself. I love the yarn. I love the fuzziness of it. Everything about it is pretty. I like, well, I like how the sweater was supposed to fit. <laughs> um, this is like one of my ongoing things with fit, finding the right fit for myself because um, they go according to your bust a lot of the time and it's not, it's not my old proportions. Um, so like my stomach and stuff is like a medium and then the top is large. And then I do the large size and they're too big and they don't have any shape and I hate them. <laughs> so this is my problem with that sweater. So eventually I will show it on here, whether I show it as it is now or if I do sweater surgery on it so I will actually love it like I was supposed to um we'll see if that happens I have to work up the nerve to do it because it's a um lamb's wool sweater and then it has mohair on it so the mohair is like really sticky and hard to take apart um which is why I haven't done it yet and every once in a while I put the sweater on I've worn it a few times, tucked in in the front so that it kind of fits better. Um, but the sleeves are huge. Like, it's baggier than this. And it is supposed to be like a puff, puff sleeved sweater, but it doesn't look good. Anyway, enough about the horrible sweater. <laughs> that's, that's my new name for it, the horrible sweater. Um, yeah. Oh, that's still hot. 
uh, so the first thing I'll show you, which I have made almost zero progress on because I did not touch it at all this week, even though I said I was going to, I was like, oh, I can make so much progress on this sweater. It'll be great. Um, I made none. I did not touch it even one time. I took it into the other room while I was watching TV the other day, and then I did not work on it. <laughs> um, I love this so far. It's the most beautiful thing that I've made. This is a blueberry pie sweater by, I'm gonna have to look it up. <laughs> um, by Joanna Coonan or Johanna Coonan. It's so pretty. I think it's gonna be gorgeous when I actually finish it. I have this much <laughs> and I made a tiny bit of progress. So, um, I think I've done like five rows since last time. <laughs> yeah, I did. I think from here to here or from here to here, something like that. Uh, yeah, it's, it's beautiful cables and then a textured section and I just think it's going to be lovely and bobbles and I love how this like flows into the cables. I love everything about it, but it's hard. <laughs> I mean, it's not that hard. It has gotten easier. Um, the beginning row on the chart moves, which took me a little while to figure out. It's not hard once you get it down though, but yeah. I am, um, this is Wool of the Andes, and the color is Solstice Heather. So it's blue, and it has some beautiful, like, light blue and purpley kind of, kind of colors in it. Yeah. Anyway, I did five rows. <laughs> Yay. That's like a long work in progress. I'm not itching to get it done soon or anything. Um, oh, I got a pin. My friend sent me a pin, um, not for my birthday, but for like a holiday gift exchange. It has a little cat, a little cat with some books and the cat is knitting. So a little knitting cat who's cozy. Um, and it's by the Clever Clove, I think. I'll put the the information in the description box. Um, yeah, I love it. And she gave me this hair, this hair thing too. I'm not sure. I'll figure out. I think I kept the tag for it. So I'll find that and put that down below too. It has like moons and stuff in it. Hopefully you can see it. Yeah, <laughs> I thought it's really cute. Anyway, so I have also made some progress on my Yamka pullover or Yamka boat neck pullover by Brittany Spainhauer. I think I bought a book and I'll, I'll put all of that information down below too. I think I bought a book though because I love the pattern so much. Um, it's kind of like a long, a long sweater and then it has it's a tiny bit loose, like a 1920s style, and it has a little lace panel right here, and the shoulders are kind of like, like that. I think it'll be so cute when it's done. It has these pretty, like, lines down the front. Well, down the whole thing, but, yeah. Bottom up, so I have... Like that much done. <laughs> I think I was about uh, probably right here last time I showed it. This is a chick that knits. Um, she's the one that I think I have all her yarn now. Um, I don't really, but I use it a lot. And this is the sock yarn. Okay, I think it's 80. Oh, here it is. It's deluxe sock. 85% superwash, extra fine, merino, 15% nylon. It's left sock and it's in the color Brambleberry. I don't know if that's going to show up. <laughs> but it's a chick that knits. She's very nice and her shop is cool. 
It's very cozy in there. I went to knit night there for the first time and because I was off work and I didn't forget. Sometimes I forget. And then um, last time I wanted to go, it snowed or not really snowed. There was an ice storm and I didn't want to drive. <laughs> Actually, I think they were closed. But anyway, I had a very nice time at the knit night. And I'm making, I'm making some progress on that. That is kind of like my Take Anywhere project, um, which I have a couple of those now because I started The Weekender by Andrew Mowry. And um, she's doing the DRK March to May knit along, and which you can make like any of her patterns. Uh, I think sweaters and shawls count in the, in the knit along. And um, I'm making the weekender. Let me see. Okay. And it has a split hem. So this is the back and it's a little bit longer than the front ribbing. So it's just a tiny bit longer in the back. I think like an inch or half an inch. Um, I love the split hem so far. Let me tell you a little, a little secret. At first I did the split hat like you start off and you do both of the hems separate, the ribbing part, and then you join in the round. And I started off, and when I joined in the round, I just like kept knitting instead of like when I usually join in the round, I slip one stitch over like one end stitch over the other end stitch, and I kind of swap them so they're pulling away from each other and really like closing up the gap. So I had to undo like. I think four rows, three or four rows, um, to go back and do that because it did not look good before. My joins weren't nice like they are now. Like uh, one of these keeps getting loose. Yeah, it kind of like pulls it, pulls it in. Um. Anyway, this is Madeline Tosh yarn. I have the band. Yeah, this is Nylon Tosh Tosh Vintage 100% Superwash Merino Wool. Um, it did grow a little bit. My swatch grew just a little bit. I had to make a super swatch for this one. It's huge. Um, if, I, if I pick that up, it's going to knock a bunch of stuff over. Hold on. I knocked a bunch of stuff over anyway. Yeah, I had to make like a monster swatch because um, usually when I use Licka, the wooden Licka needles, the driftwood ones, I have to go up two stitches. But I had to go, not two stitches. I have to go up two sizes than what the pattern says, excuse me, to get gauge. But... This time I had to go down two sizes to get gauge. Excuse me, I have the hiccups now. Not good. Um, yeah, so I started out with the needle that it says to use in the pattern. And then I did like one needle down and it was still too big. And then I did this needle size and um, it's a size. Uh-oh. It's 4.5 millimeters, so 4.5 millimeters, I think, is a 7. Um, yeah, so I had to use a 7. So, and I think I didn't even hit the, either the, the row gauge. I hit the stitch gauge, but not the row gauge, which you, you knit in inches anyway for the length, so it's not that big of a deal, but I never hit gauge. It just doesn't happen for me. Um. So that was fun, but it did grow a little bit. So this will grow just a tad, but it's okay because this is supposed to be like a really cozy, I think like boxy oversized thing. So this is how much I have done and you knit it inside out. So really this side is the, the real side, not the real side, the right side. <laughs> um, and it has this cool, where'd it go? It was hiding. 
it has this really neat like cable thing down the front that you do with slip stitches, which is the same the same sort of thing on my Yonka boat net, but it's a bigger. I usually don't like the way that pearl stitches look, but with this yarn, it's like really pretty and I actually like it. So I think I will wear this and I'm gonna try to make it so I can wear it either side out. So I can wear it inside out. Um, I heard Andrew Mowry talking about this sweater on her podcast one time and that's what she said that she does with one of hers. I think she wears wears one of them both ways. So that's what I want to try to do. So I need to be really nice about my finishing and hiding ends and all of that. Yeah. Oh, the color of the yarn is rye bourbon. It's like a whiskey color. I think it's really pretty. It's like this nice warm, this warm tones. And I, I used to not think that this color suited me, but then I saw um, Inga from Knitting Traditions really loves these kind of colors. And we have the same coloring before she dyed her hair, um, which still looks cute, but yeah. So I was like, oh, I have brown eyes and brown hair too. So maybe this color would look nice on me. And I think it will. I'm I'm excited about this. It's knitting up so quickly. I started this on March 1st and I already have this much done. But yeah. I think I had, I had like four inches last time I measured. I think that I probably have five or six now though. Yeah. That's the it's bottom up, obviously. Yeah. I think I'm gonna really love that and I hope that I finish it with enough time to wear it. Um, I can at least wear it like inside at work and stuff because it gets very hot here in Oklahoma. I'm in Oklahoma City. I can't remember if I said that or not, but it's, it gets really hot here and we have weird weather. Like um, all this week was so nice though. It was in the 70s Fahrenheit and I was wearing sandals and we had lunch in the park the other day. It was really good um, for, for a uh, vacation because we just kind of like moseyed around and I fell asleep in the hammock and it was pretty good. I, th I think everyone kind of needs a staycation every once in a while. My husband's always reminding me to take a drink so my voice doesn't get weird. Uh, let's see. So I have one more whip and then something that I'm going to frog. Well, two more whips and then the thing that I'm going to frog. But the thing that I'm going to frog goes with the second whip. So the thing that I'm most excited about is the Wild Posy pullover or sweater by Melody Hoffman, who is B Mandarins on Instagram. I think some of her patterns say B Mandarins too. Anyway, it's this beautiful textured yoke, and it has, you can't see it really because it's not blocked, but it has little eyelet. Uh, where are they? I think right here I have some little eyelet things on it. But I finished the sleeves. Sleeves. <laughs> yeah. I just it's so pretty. I'm obsessed with it. But also, this is another thing that also if I don't finish this in the next couple of weeks, I'm not going to get to wear it this year well until like November. <laughs> But I only have a few more inches. Let's see. Yeah, I'm down to there. You can kind of see the eyelets right here. Yeah, so I have just the body left to go and then the ribbing at the bottom and then it's done. Yay. But I'm kind of afraid of the ribbing at the bottom now because when I... First of all, when I cast on my second sleeve, 
I forgot that I'm holding Plotulopi from Iztex. Uh, it's an Icelandic roving yarn and it's very delicate. Let me see. So you can kind of see that it's not spun. It's an unspun yarn. Yeah. It's very delicate and you hold it double because it kind of gives it strength and then the knit stitches all hold together and it's really strong. But when you're knitting it, it's not. <laughs> um, so when I was binding off the second sleeve, I broke the yarn for the first time. <laughs> and it was scary <laughs> and not fun. Um, so what I ended up doing was putting water in my hands and getting my hand like really wet and then uh, rubbing to join the yarn back together and to join the two threads together to kind of like felt them a little bit um, so that they were stronger. And then I had read that some people will, um, before they start binding off, they will actually do that to the whole, their, all of their extra yardage that they're using to bind off because then it's less likely to break. So you kind of make like a, a spun yarn and um so it doesn't break off so i might actually have to do that for the bottom ribbing because i do not want that to happen again it was not a fun time um i did a tubular bind off and she said in the pattern that like if it's too much for you or you're like can't do it because the yarn keeps breaking then you can do like any bind off that you can manage basically but I'm obsessed with the tubular bind off. It just looks so nice. It gives you like a continuous edge that goes, just, it just kind of like wraps around. Yeah. So I'll have to psych myself up for that. <laughs> Maybe I'll do like a little bit at a time. And I'll definitely prep the roving so it doesn't break. Because that was nightmare knitting. Fairy times. So my last whip is this. It's the 41 romper. I think it's by Florence Merlin. And I had, I think in the last episode, I showed a caramel one that I had started, but I actually had yarn to make two of them. And I abandoned the caramel one for now. And I made one out of a chick that knits 8020 sock yarn in the color doe skin. So it's this pretty like taupey color. Yeah, it's really nice. Um, yeah, so I have most of it done. There's the bottom. Yeah, so I just have to do the ribbing on little armholes and the tops and then also on the leg holes yeah I made the three to six month one yeah so the baby he's not due till April and like I figure he'll be in those little cotton onesies for a long time anyway just because of like spit up and all of that when they're really little so yeah I'll have to finish this soon. Like I really need to. It's so close to being done. Um, I just have to talk myself into doing the ribbing. <laughs> it's on really small needles, so yeah. I just like I think I built it up too much in my head. Anyway, so what I'm wanna make, well, well, what I am going to make to go with the little onesie is pants little jogger pants I think they're gonna look cute but here's the deal this is gonna get frogged because well I think that they're really cute and if I was using yarn that wasn't hand dyed and I didn't have to swap every other row um I think it would be okay and I would just seam up the sides and it would be fine but um I hate it. 
This is also a pattern by Florence Merlin. And if you like knitting things flat and, you know, carrying up yarn when you're doing hand dyed yarn, that's cool. You'll like this, but I'm just not enjoying it. And this was one of the things at the beginning of the week that I was like, oh, I could finish that real fast. Um, but I just had zero desire to work on it at all. So what I've done is I found a pattern. Let me see if I see if I can find it. Uh, in there yet. So I found a pattern, or basically they look the same. Little little pants, little jogger pants. Um, is that too far? Um, where is it? Yeah, so I'm gonna do the Rocky Pants by Tin Can Knits instead, which are mostly knit in the round, and then I think on DPNs, which is fine with me. <laughs> so I'm gonna make those, except just in one color, because um, I don't I don't want to mess with knitting flat and and switching yarn and, and all of that. <laughs> I think the thing that did it for me was that it kind of pulls. Or I had to be really careful about the edges when I carry the yarn up and it's just making a mess kind of. It doesn't really look like a mess right now, but it's just not fun to deal with while I'm knitting. So I'm I'm gonna frog this, take it all out, uh, restart, and make those other ones. Cause I just I just can't be bothered with flat. <laughs> Mostly flat knitting with uh this was knit. Um no actually some of this I think was in the round. Uh with hand dyed yarn. I just don't want to do it. No thanks. <laughs> and now that's something that I know. See, I, I thought it would be okay and I was like, yeah, piece of cake. Not bad. Um but yeah, I just don't like it. So now I'll get on to my acquisitions. Um, this was something that um, someone brought a bunch of stuff to like a bunch of books to knit night that they didn't want anymore. And I started looking through them and a lot of them were like, uh, what do you call it? Like compilations with a bunch of different um, people like designers in them. And I really liked this one. I don't even remember what it was now because I went to her Ravelry page to see her other designs and I became obsessed with every single one of these. Um, it's in this book called A Hand Knit Romance by Jenny Atkinson. And they all look like vintage patterns and like much like the Yonka boat neck. Like there's a dress in here. Yeah, let me see better. Yeah, there's a, a dress. And then like some really pretty socks. Some gloves. Some gloves in here. Yeah, there's this really pretty like blouse. Like 20s looking blouse. I just love almost everything in this book. There's a little bag that you can make. Um, I'm trying to not show patterns and things, but a little bag, like a handbag. Uh, there's like beaded stuff in here. That you, yeah, you can make like, this beaded shirt and then arm warmers or mittens. They're called mittens in here. And then a little beaded bag to go with it. I don't know if I'm gonna try that. I've never done beaded knitting before. <laughs> These socks are so cute. Like lace, lace socks. Anyway, I'm going to make, where is it?
Here it is. I'm going to make this cotton camisole. So it kind of looks like an undershirt, sort of, or like a summery type of thing. That's the front of it. And then this is what the back looks like. I just think it's so cute. I don't know if I'll put a ribbon in it or not, but we'll see. Yeah, there's this like jacket in here. Ooh. I didn't go far enough. Thought I went too far. Uh, the jacket. And then the back of it's super fitted. I might end up making that sometime. I would wear that like so much. Anyway, if you like vintage things, I definitely recommend this. Like, there's the dress that looks like a flapper. It is called the flapper dress. It's so pretty. Yeah. So I will probably end up making a few things out of this book. But I definitely recommend this. Um, I bought some yarn to make that, actually. Um... I went, so I went to three yarns, the three local yarn stores during my staycation. <laughs> um, oh, I also ordered something online, but I'll talk about that later. I've thrown everything that I bought and that I want to show um, into a bag. <laughs> so I have to dig some of it out. So that camisole was you're supposed to use cotton and cotton really hurts my hands and I'm not sure that I like how it knits up really. So um, I bought this uh, Universal Yarns Bamboo Pop. It's 50% cotton and 50% bamboo. So it'll be cool for the summertime. And it'll be a little bit, I don't know, it just feels nicer than the regular, like, plain cotton. So that's what I'm going to use. And then I think this is called Winter Squash. It's this really pretty, like, peachy coral color. I wasn't trying to, like, match the color, but I, this is also, like, the wrong weight of yarn. I think this is sport weight. Um, and the pattern calls for fingering weight, but I'm going to make it work because I looked at like three or four other yarns in the store and I just didn't like any of them as much as I like this. It's very shiny. I think that's the bamboo. Anyway, so that's what I'm going to use to make that camisole whenever I get around to it. Um, I also. For my birthday, my husband, basically, we went to one of the yarn stores. Um, I got that at Yarnatopia, and then I also went to Sealed with a Kiss in Guthrie, and which is like half an hour from here. And I got, I got a Coco Knits Maker's Board, because I usually have my, like I have all my patterns and stuff saved on my iPad. And that's what I use at home to look at patterns. But sometimes, like, I don't really feel like taking it to knit night, like hauling it in there. And sometimes I do print off paper patterns if I, like, need them, if I take a project to work on at lunch, at work, or something. I bought this maker's board. It looks like a little folder. It's magnetic. And then you do that. And... It will stand up on a table and then it comes with all of these silver magnets and then the white magnets and then I bought or my husband bought for me extra magnets for it and there's also a ruler and the cool thing about the coconut stuff is that like you can if you have a darning needle or a finishing needle that's metal it'll stick to it it's all magnetized and like my coconut's row counter will just stick right on there. And it's, see the magnet came off with it, super magnetized. Um, so that will be helpful, I think. 
You can get a ruler too, but um, the store was out of them when I went. All the magnets want to stick together. Um, yeah, they have metal, like these metal sheets inside. I'm not going to try to pull it out, but you can kind of see in there, there's metal, metal sheets so it'll all stick together. I think that's really good. I think I will get a lot of use out of it. Um, it came in a bag that would make a really nice project bag too. That came in this little, little bag, like a burlap kind of thing with a drawstring. I think it'll be a great project bag too. So that is that. And then, <laughs> right after I had already started finishing the sleeve on my Wild Cozy sweater, I decided, because I had to use interchangeable, like shorty interchangeables with the shortest cord that I have that they make. Uh, and then I had to use some of my mindful needles that are like nine and a half inches. And then those were even too much. For, or it was maybe it was too small because they have metal tips on them. Anyway, I did not enjoy it. And then I had to switch to DPNs at some point. So I was using like three different kinds of needles and it was really annoying. So when I was in uh, Sealed with a Kiss, I got these fixed. No, did I get these? Yes, I did. <laughs> Couldn't remember. Yeah, I got these Lika fixed nine inch circulars. So, and I got sizes uh, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I'm going to give these a try, see if I like them. Hopefully, they're better. This way, too, I have wooden ones and metal ones. That way, there's not too much of a difference in my gauge. Yeah, so I will let you guys know how I like these. Um, they look okay. I'm not that jazzed about the fixed cables, but what can you do? These are like extra short. I think the tips are half the size of my shorty tips that I have. So maybe they'll work better than using the other ones. Maybe I won't have to use DPNs at the very least. Um, I just don't like tracking them down and trying to figure out what size I need and trying not to lose the extra needle that you need to knit with. Anyway, um, I also ordered some yarn from Knit Pick because they had a sale. It wasn't my fault. They had a sale. Um, I'm going to make the Storyteller by Jennifer Steingast. And it's that, Ooh. that one, the color work. And I saw, I went through the project pages on Ravelry and I saw someone made a black and white one and it was so cute. And I, I wear black shirts almost every day with like colorful skirts. I only have one knitted black shirt, so, which is not enough for me anyway. Um, so... I thought I got this color, which is Welly's Heather. So it's like a dark grayish black, maybe like a slate color black with some tan, like creamy colored neps and brown neps in it. So that is that one for the main color and then for the color work part of the sweater, I got Picket Fence Heather. So it's like the opposite, it's white and it has the brown and black necks in it. So what it'll be like, or like this <laughs> on the color work. Yeah, I think it'll look really good and it'll be cozy. I might not get to it this year because it's worsted weight, 
and it's going to be hot soon, so this might be for later in the year. Or maybe I'll knit it at the end of the summer. We kind of only have two seasons here. <laughs> they kind of like merge into each other. And there's not much distinction between like summer and spring and spring and fall. <laughs> it's just kind of like, oh, now it's hot. Oh, now it's cold. <laughs> there's not, we don't really get the in-between seasons. So then, um, my friend actually bought these for me. They're these little stitch markers from Twin Mountain Handcrafts. And they're little, they're, they're etched with little plants. They have plants on them. I don't know how well you can see. Yeah, there we go. Little plant pots. And that's Twin Mountain Handcrafts. I really like those. I thought they were cute. That was a gift from a friend. Oh, at also at Deal of the Kiss, I bought some of the Lantern Moon finishing needles. They have a little loop at the top, and I really want to try that because sometimes I have a really hard time getting the yarn into the regular like embroidery needles, um, so that I can hide my ends. And these are. This is nice and big, and I've heard they work really well. So I'm going to give those a try. We'll see how it goes. I think I might try to use them when I do the bottom bind off for my Wild Posy. I don't know. They come in different weights, too, like different sizes, like needles do. I think that one's bigger than, yeah, it's like big, middle, small circumference I don't know I don't know if that makes a difference anyway the lantern moon needles look really pretty I was so tempted by them but I had just bought the Lika Capra the copper needles uh so I I couldn't justify that buying the other ones so so this my last purchase comes goes along with my recommendation um, by the way, it just started raining really hard, so I'm really sorry if you can hear that. Maybe my husband can, uh, fix the sound so you can't hear it. So, my recommendation for this week is Stranded Dye Works, and they are Jude Harper on YouTube. And they are a yarn dyer who lives in Scotland. And um, their mother helps helps with the shop, and she's in Surrey, and yeah, or East Surrey. I think it's East Surrey. Um, I've been looking at their yarn for a really long time and obsessed with it. Their colors are really pretty, and I love their YouTube channel. Um, they talk about transitioning, and also they talk about. Uh, dyeing yarn and they knit they've been knitting really cute like baby stuff and they just like knock it out man i i know baby stuff is like faster to knit but i don't know they do a really really quick job <laughs> way quicker than i do with my six whips <laughs> ahead of time um probably why uh anyway and then um They've been renovating their house in Scotland, and they showed some of that and talked about that. And uh, they redid their garden, and there's a cat who is not my cat, <laughs> or not their cat. Uh, it lives across the street and likes to, like, sneak in. Anyway, so I finally ordered yarn from them, and it's so pretty. Um, I, I was tempted because... I don't usually like to order yarn, like not on the continent because of shipping and all of that, but purple guys. <laughs> um, and this one, they said that they weren't going to make again, either ever or for a while. I don't know. It's called Anti Valentine. It's so pretty. It has like these pops of pink. 
and then the, the purple tonal. Ah, oh, so pretty. So pretty. Um, anyway. And this is 8020 Superwash Blue Face Luster Nylon Fingering Weight. Yeah. So nice. Last time I looked, they still said they still had some anti Valentine on the website. So that's uh, strandeddyeworks.co.uk. So you should check this out and check out their YouTube channel, Jude Harper. So good. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys today. Um, stay safe, make good decisions, wear your mask, get a vaccine. Um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, that's a bummer. <laughs> but like, be good guys and happy knitting. Bye.